Blood Harvest. This is where you're going to spend 80% of your time on the way to World Tier 4. Let me explain why and the dirty little secrets of the event. And as a bonus, at the end, my 1 to 100 leveling strategy this season. Blood Harvest is always active on the map and it lasts for one hour goes away and then starts somewhere else on the map. The main reason to do blood harvest is to gain potent blood and you'll need so much of it. 227 sounds a lot. I already had over a thousand and it's not much. You have to spend 25 to unlock a vampiric power or upgrade one and you can choose one of three randomly. The thing is to upgrade one from level one to two, you need to roll it five times. So already 125 potent blood just to upgrade one because it's always one xp and guess what if you want to upgrade it to level three because i was lucky i already got blood boil on level two huh you need 10 rolls so another 250 blood to get it upgraded but you will actually need to get it because i spent 25 here and i need to be lucky to see it there you kind of notice we're going to need at least 10,000 potent blood to really get everything to the point where you want it to be now how do we get potent blood the best way in blood harvest events first there's two resources you can get in a blood harvest that is blood lures and also blood seeker keys blood lures are going to be needed to for example activate a blood lure receptacle which will then unlock the blood well and boom 55 potent blood that was quite simple but that's not the only use for blood lures they're also used at the sanguine altars and you can actually see them on the map to summon blood seekers and blood seekers will drop potent blood they will also drop the blood seeker keys so they'll provide you with everything you need murder these gentlemen now we get eight potent blood a seeker key and two items with the seeker key you can open the seeker caches and they will always have items even more blood lures coven slippers and packs that you're looking for because this is how you essentially get your packs by killing the seekers and by opening the coffins. Now I could take this pack with a right click and apply it to any item if I want to. This one has one more slot and I could add one more divinity to it. Don't do that yet. Now you might also just randomly run around and find two blood seekers. And that's why you kind of want to be going through the whole goddamn event. You don't want to stay stationary because these two seekers again can drop everything you've been looking for, but we don't have to spend our blood lures. And we're gonna get more potent blood here there's sadly not a key but they also were guarding a blood well so that's another 58 potent blood therefore the most important part is to not stay in one spot you truly want to just ride through this i mean drop out kill some elites because yes there is a goddamn bunch of elites always lurking around and then further discover the whole thing save the adventurers or hunters acclaim We'll get to that in a second because that is another level of the blood harvest and probably don't get stuck doing events i mean events are good for obolts but as i just told you you kind of really want to rush through the whole shebang here to find as many random blood seekers as possible because they can be around these blood wells but they can also just be randomly standing around killing elites has a big chance to drop blood lures as well as you can see random blood lures and you want to have obviously as many of them as possible because you can continuously summon the seekers there's like i think a downtime of like a minute or so on an altar and then you can straight away go again now there's one really cool thing about the blood harvest and that is there's always going to be three grim favor events now i've already done them here but one of these grim favor events is always kill a lot of revenants the other one is kill two blood seekers which is incredibly easy and the third one is to destroy vampiric structures that you can randomly find during the blood harvest this is one of these vampiric structures for example destroyed and the best part is they always spawn in a lead so again better chances for blood lures getting, getting even more blood seekers and now again just two random blood seekers here in the world perfection i'm not even making this up where we're just randomly running around so you you notice be, be agile, be active, go through that. Do not, do not be complacent. Don't just find like one spot where you like the kind of minions. You, you want to really go through the whole thing. And then you get backstabbed by another two Bloodseekers as we were just clear, cleansing this vampiric structure. So do <laughs> cleanse these structures, even though if you're done with the event, even though if you have done everything already, two more keys, five keys in total, even more packs for the end game so i can adapt all these items is it worth it spending 15 lures to unlock the blood well 
The answer is yes, because it's 56 potent blood. And if you kill two blood seekers, you get around 15, 16 potent blood. So you kind of notice there is definitely a distinctive advantage. Now, as you're a very successful blood harvest hunter, there's also the acclaim board, and that is for killing monsters, destroying structures, killing blood seekers, freeing prisoners, all that kind of stuff. And you'll unlock Burai's rewards throughout your journey. Sanguine Brace, for example, when you kill an enemy, fortify for 3% of your base life, and that one gives you also a critical chance. That's one vampiric power unlocked without having to spend potent blood. And now we just went around a little bit, and I got another 200 blood for like, what, 5 to 10 minutes of this. We get the blood fast, but again, you want to spend the start of your journey here to have all the blood powers unlocked and everything. And as you can see, I already have one, two, three, four, five powers activated for my build currently. None of the super cool expensive powers, none of the really powers I want, but I also would need six eternity on my items, but I only have five anyways at this point. Now, which vampire powers to unlock first when you press the unlock button? Well, that's very simple. Try to focus on the white and the purple ones. The yellow ones need too many packs to work straight away. Because right now we get the bathe and blood, there'd be six packs. And I would maybe get that activated. But for example, for blood boil, I would need six eternity straight away. And then I couldn't do any other eternity power. Compared to that, for the week, just two ferocity. Co Coven's Fang for 26% more damage on my minions, two divinity. Uh, undying, one single eternity. And that's it. So these powers are something you should focus on first. Obviously, get the ones you do want. But in your first, like, two, three, four hundred blood, just get these because they'll instantly make you stronger and improve your build. Now, what will I do for leveling? It's actually pretty simple. Every single hour a blood harvest pops up, I'll do straight away the three whispers and farm the whole thing down to get a little bit of blood. Then swap over to doing the dungeons you need for your Codex of Powers. Because there are some aspects like Potent Blood and also Fast Blood Aspect that I won for my blood, blood builds. Do them in Tier 1 already. That's fine. And every time a Legion event crops up, which ain't right now, you straight away do it. And if a World Boss is right around the corner, well, you know the drill. We want the World Boss as well. I won't do a single Stronghold before World Tier 4. Until World Tier 4, it is essentially the Helltide areas, the Legion events, and also our good friends, the Blood Harvest. That's it. Focus on these. And as soon as you're World Tier 4, as you're going to hit it probably with level 60, 55, then you can do the Strongholds because they'll scale with your level and you won't struggle killing enemies that are higher level than you. I hope this helps you with your Season 2. And if you're now looking for the top three Necromancer builds to level from 1 to 100, choose one.